Hi, I'm Jim Hermiller uh, from Indianapolis St. Vincent Hospital. And uh, I wanted to talk to you today about the COAP trial and some of the uh, latest data and next steps in catheter-based repair. It's really a pleasure to uh, present uh, for CIF 2020 virtual. And uh, I just wanna remind everybody about next year in March for the 2021 CIF. These are my disclosures. We'll talk a little bit uh, overall uh, about secondary mitral regurgitation, dig into the COAP trial, next steps, device innovation, and then conclude. So where are we with mitral clip therapy? Well over 100,000 patients these days. And if we look around the world, what is it that's being treated with edge-to-edge -edge repair? It is secondary mitral regurgitation. And I would say most of those people that have mixed, mixed disease, they have underlying secondary MR. And I would say 80 probably plus percent of patients who are uh, undergoing edge-to-edge -edge repair are patients who have secondary functional mitral regurgitation. We have really great outcomes these days in the real world. These are some data from TVD registry, uh, ability to reduce uh, MR to one uh, or two plus, uh, uh, 90 plus percent uh, and a very, very high safety profile. So we're doing very well these days um, and uh, we've learned a lot over the last decade. So let's talk about secondary mitral regurgitation. It's very clear uh, what the differences are, but sometimes it can be a bit confusing based on the echocardiogram, primary disorder, uh, degenerative or rare disease, endocarditis, and rheumatic disease, and then secondary, which is uh, really a consequence of uh, annular dilatation or tugging on cords uh, due to prior scarring. So there's leaflet tethering, um, annular dilatation, um, I think one of the causes of secondary mitral regurgitation that's uh, a bit more common these days as patients live even longer with their atrial fibrillation is atrial fib associated annular dilatation and secondary MR. The ventricle's fine, it's really due to the atrium. So um, we really didn't know whether treating secondary MR before the COAP trial was a benefit. We know surgery didn't improve survival, maybe improved quality of life and that the foundation of the treatment of secondary mitral regurgitation is guideline-directed medical therapy, and in those that have an indication, CRT, resynchronization therapy. So COAP, so co you know, one of the four or five biggest trials that I've ever, um, you know, witnessed in my career, and uh, in this trial, over 600 patients randomized to guideline-directed medical therapy or guideline-directed medical therapy in the mitral clip. I wanna go through these inclusions because this is what is gonna be in the CMS um, in terms of payment. Uh, they're really following the inclusion criteria of the COAP trial. And if you wanna replicate the results of COAP, enroll the patients that were in COAP. EF between 20 and 50, LVN systolic dimensions less than 70. We'll talk more about it, but they really need to have moderately severe to severe MR. Um, they need to be on stable, maximum tolerated guideline-directed medical therapy and do CRT up front if they have an indication before you mitral clip these patients. Uh, these patients were hospitalized or they had high BNP or pro-BNPs and uh, they're not felt to be uh, surgical candidates and they don't need other valvular disease uh, treated. And then they need to have an anatomic uh, uh, they need anatomic features that suggest uh, that they can be treated with edge-to-edge -edge repair. So primary endpoints were effectiveness, heart failure through 24 months admissions, and then um, device safety. The procedure was very safe, um, um, well within the projected safety margins, um, and uh, patients did remarkably well in the trial. Here's the primary effectiveness endpoint that people are aware of, but just a dramatic reduction in the need for rehospitalization. Uh, number needed to treat is quite small, only 3.1 over that 24 month period to prevent a hospitalization. Again, primary safety, very high, uh, freedom from any significant event, uh, 95%. Secondary endpoints all go the right way. And the one I wanna just focus on is all cause mortality at 12 months, significantly less with the mitral clip. Um, and you need to treat uh, uh, only uh, six patients to prevent a death in two years, which is really dramatic. We don't see that with uh, other therapies, except for maybe TAVR. 
change in the quality of life, remarkable, remarkable. You know, if you look at any of the drugs or CRT, it's anywhere uh, uh, increase in four to maybe seven for quality of life. Uh, the, the delta here is almost 15. Mitral regurgitation severity, you know, 95% of these patients had one to two plus uh, MR. And it was very stable from 30 days out to 24 months. You know, got a good result initially, and that was durable. Now, these results were very different than Mitra FR. Okay, so we learned from the COAP trial who to do edge to edge repair with secondary MR. What we learned from the Mitra FR trial is who don't we want to do? Who is it that isn't going to benefit from this? 300 patients, so about half the size. This was done in France, absolutely no. Uh, improvement in death or heart failure hospitalizations for, for the Mitra FR on the left, dramatically different for COAP. So why? Well, one, the amount of MR that the patients had in COAP, substantially greater. Two, the LV and diastolic volumes, how the ventricles performed, how they were remodeled, much worse in Mitra FR. Two, guideline directed medical therapy was you know, not really stable and not maximally tolerated to begin with uh, at baseline. Um, and the acute procedural and 12 month results, quite different, much better for co-apt than they were Mitra FR. So why are these differences? If, if somebody asks you, hey, you know, Mitra FR didn't show anything. Well, there wasn't as much MR, the ventricles were worse. They weren't treated with guideline directed medical therapy before they were randomized. And then the results were not as good procedurally. This just shows you impact of the EROA, how bad is the mitral regurgitation and LVEDV, right? So if you have an EROA less than 30 and your LVEDVI is greater than 96, you don't get much benefit, okay? You get significant mitral regurgitation over an EROA over 30 millimeters squared and LVEDVI less than 96 you know, substantial reductions. And even if you got a big ventricle and you got lots of MR, um, your MR predominant, as Paul Grayburn would say, they still do benefit, but watch out. Terrible ventricle, sort of moderate, not, not severe MR, watch out. You're probably not gonna help that patient much. Here's just a typical example these days, 64 year old woman who had a primary cardiomyopathy, EF 30%, guideline directed medical therapy sent from really the advanced heart failure team because uh, uh, she didn't look like a great, um, uh, certainly a patient for a transplant or even VAD. Uh, you can see uh, severe tethering down into the ventricle. EF is 30% and diastolic, uh, uh, her uh, and systolic dimension was uh, less than 70 millimeters. And you can see in the BICOM, she leaks, uh, you know, all across the, uh, uh, line of coaptation. Uh, look at that. We even thought about doing TMVR, but she didn't. Uh, she couldn't do that because of her COPD. This is two XTR clips, trivial mitral regurgitation with a gradient of only you know, one millimeter mercury afterwards. So this is what you can do these days technically. This is uh, looking down the barrel on top. Uh, it's the aortic uh, valve here. And then you can see the two clips um, and, uh, uh, you know, a dramatic reduction in LA pressure in the V wave, as you can see here. All right, three year outcomes, no different. Patients who got the mitral clip with guideline directed medical therapy versus guideline directed medical therapy continue to do uh, exceptionally well. Heart failure admissions continue to be dramatically lower. And as a consequence, you look at this three-year data, two-year data, it's just a home run for COAPT. And uh, this led to the FDA approving the device. And we just had, as of June 30th, 2020, the CMS uh, proposal to expand coverage for secondary mitral regurgitation. Um, there's a comment period till July 30th about this, and then uh, uh, it will be uh, covered by CMS. Now, we talked about those key inclusions. You, you don't want the EF too low. You don't want the chamber size to be too big. You want them to have 
moderately severe to severe, really significant mitral regurgitation. And they need to be on guideline directed medical therapy. And here's the heart failure toolbox. You know, these patients need to uh, likely see a heart failure specialist. Uh, uh, we'll see what the final CMS guidelines for are, but they need to be on a beta blocker, an ACE or an ARNI aldo antagonist. Um, and particularly, uh, uh, ARNI. Um, can be remarkably good in these patients with mitral regurgitation. I've seen just a, you know, a, a, a large number who in the addition of entresto and mitral regurgitation becomes uh, uh, moderate or mild. One of the questions that always comes up, hey, what's the target? Maximally tolerated. Um, and even though you don't get to maybe where the trials got to, uh, the uh, benefit of the drugs, even at the lower doses, is substantial. These are just a little guideline uh, directed medical therapy dosing. And then just remember, these patients we're going to see with MitraClip, they're all in here, right? They're all in here. They all should be beta blocker, ARNI, aldo antagonist, um, and uh, on maximally tolerated doses. Okay, so just a second to talk about the echocardiographic uh, characteristics because this is really important, right? And how was it in COAPT that we chose these patients? Because one, it's often difficult to assess the severity of the mitral regurgitation in secondary MR because it tends to be eccentric, it tends to be uh, not a round uh, jet, and as a consequence, it can be. Uh, difficult to uh, ascertain the severity. And again, it can be just annular dilatation, or you can go all the way out to grade four where you get bad annular dilatation, you get great distortion of the geometry of the valve and tethering of both leaflets. Okay, just to remember, there are 1,600 patients uh, almost who were enrolled, and a ton of them were excluded because they didn't have adequate mitral regurgitation, all right? And tier one, where 90% of these patients fell, they had an EROA greater than 0.3 or they had PV systolic reversal. Now in tier two, which made up only 70 of the patients, their EROA was between 0.2 and 0.3, but the regurgitant fraction was greater than 40%, the vena uh, cava width was 0.5, all right? So one of these other, all right, regurgitant volume was greater than 45. And then tier three was two of these others along with an EROA less than 0.2. So just remember this chart as you look at the echocardiograms and decide, hey, is edge to edge repair something that's gonna benefit my patient? If you can't figure it out how bad it is, MR can be uh, exceptionally uh, useful here. All right, that's where we are today given the co-app data. How do you select the patient? Uh, as they um, are evaluated for edge-to-edge uh, -edge repair. Um, what are the new therapies for secondary mitral regurgitation coming down the pike? Well, what are the other devices for edge-to-edge -edge repair? Direct annuloplasty, coronary sinus annuloplasty, and then TMVR with a big R replacement. So what's new? So first of all, with respect to the mitral clip, we've got G4, and that'll be a wide general release over the summer. Um, not only is the delivery system simpler and better, but we've got uh, now two extra flavors of the clip um, with NTW wide, XTW wide, They're about 50% wider than the NT and XT. The length of the arms are the, second, are the same for NT and XT, but the width for NTW and XTW are wider, as you can see here. <coughs> there will also be individual uh, 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 leaflet grasping with G4, which can be helpful, you know, if you've got a horribly tethered uh, and very small posterior leaflet in these secondary mitral regurgitation patients or a big coaptation gap. The other edge to edge repair coming down the pipe uh, and is in pivotal trial both for secondary and primary uh, mitral regurgitation is the Pascal device, which is shown here. Um, it's a nitinol based uh, uh, system. It has a central spacer uh, intended to fill the regurgitation jet. Uh, it has broad paddles to uh, potentially reduce stress on the native leaflets. And the class will offer independent leaflet capture 
um, and you can really optimize the grasp, right? So you get a grasp and you love the, the anterior leaflet's deep and there's very little movement of that to anterior leaflet, but uh, posterior, you're not quite sure about, um, you're able to open up the uh, posterior clasp um, and then uh, dig deep into that uh, posterior leaflet to get a better grasp. And then it completely elongates to uh, help uh, promote not getting tied, tied in the cords underneath. How about putting a ring on it? How about an aneoplasty ring? You know, it's the cornerstone of all surgical repair, whether that be primary or secondary. I'm not gonna go into this. Um, there are a number of transcatheter aneuroplasty devices. They're not uh, in pivotal trial uh, in terms of the non-coronary sinus devices, uh, but they're, they're improving rapidly. Um, and we really need to get to the point that uh, these can be done in a uh, relatively efficient uh, fashion and we're able to uh, do this and, and see what we're doing uh, uh, by, with the imaging. So um, stay tuned. Um, we're gonna hear more about this and there's also coronary sinus devices as well that help cinch up the coronary sinus and uh, uh, bring in the annulus. Now, what about transcatheter mitral valve uh, replacement? Uh, these are probably the big boys on the block right now. Cardiac Q, Medtronic, uh, Intrepid, and Abbott's Tendine. None of these are in pivotal trials. The one that is going to start, oh, let me just say, uh, what's the challenge? Uh, we all know that these, these devices need to get transfemoral. You know, putting a hole in the apex in these uh, secondary mitral regurgitation patients is not necessarily a good thing. It's well tolerated. Um, the, the problem is, you know, you got to basically take this bus, turn it upside down and, and uh, get it to the valve. Um, and uh, one of the ways to potentially get that bus to where it needs to go is to have a docking system and uh, sort of a two-stage uh, deployment. And this is the uh, Sapien M3 system, which I think will be the first transeptal system to undergo um, really a pivotal trial. Basically, there's a docking system that goes underneath the valve and surrounds the cords, and then a uh, Sapien M3 valve, which is uh, basically an S3, but uh, uh, designed for the uh, mitral position. And then you basically land it inside this dock, similar to what you would do with uh, a current uh, mitral valve and valve uh, uh, application. So. Clinical trial, pivotal trial on the way. So I think to conclude, mitral clip uh, and edge to edge repair in FMR is effective with high acute procedural success and low risk. In patients who fit the co-apt criteria and have had maximally tolerated guideline directed medical therapy and it's stable. And what do I mean by stable? I didn't really, uh, talk about this, but I should, you know, at least of one month of stable therapy. For CRT, it's three months. Um, but you should get at least one month of, hey, they're on the maximum drug that they can be, check their echo, MR still bad, then uh, they're a go with respect to the GM GMT. You can expect in those patients that they're gonna have a superior survival and many fewer hospitalizations. The first, Therapy to show an intervention for secondary MR it reduces mortality and hospitalization. Um, and uh, again, you need patients that have ventricles that are reasonable. You know, they're not completely blown out. The end systolic uh, diameter is not over 70. Uh, the EFs somewhere between 20 and 50. And uh, um, they've got significant MR um, as we talked about. The ongoing future trials uh, will um, involve both surgery and, uh, and also transcatheter techniques. The COAP trial will really make it that the control is going to be edge to edge repair. That's going to be the control arm. So, you know, it's going to be very difficult if you don't have a transeptal solution uh, um, to match the safety of uh, the mitral clip because it is so good. So I wanna thank you for your attention and that's a quick run around the uh, functional mitral regurgitation, secondary mitral regurgitation block.